I've been doing a series on spiritual power, and this is number three of that series. Spiritual power, number three, how to receive the desires of your heart. How many of you have desires in your heart? How many of you have desires in your heart that you want to see to come to pass? How many of you want to receive the desires of your heart from the Lord? Amen. So this sermon is for you. Of course, we have desires from our hearts. And um, some of the desires are very simple. Well, I mean, I could say, I just want to go to Yum Cha for Mother's Day. And that's easy. You don't have to wait on God. You don't have to fast and pray. <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> amen. But some desires that you know, amen, they are not, they are not like want-tos. They are desires that God has put in your heart. We have to be able to differentiate between desires and want to. That's a big difference. So discernment has to be in place for us to know the difference between what you truly desire and what you just want to. And I want to introduce a very powerful woman to you this morning. Not myself. <laughs> introduce to you a very powerful woman, and her name is Hannah. Hannah. Her name is Hannah in the Bible. She's not a preacher. She has never preached a sermon. She has never stood behind a pulpit. She has never had um, a very famous evangelical ministry. She was never a, a spiritual celebrity, but she's a very, very powerful woman. And she's a very, very powerful woman. And one thing that we need to understand is that we must have spiritual power for our personal life. It is not enough to just have spiritual power for the pulpit. It is not enough to just have spiritual power for your preaching, for your ministry, even for your business, for your work. Everything must start from home. We must have the power to be and the power to do. The power to be that gives us the power to do. Out of the abundance of being, we get into the doing. It's very, very important. And the reason why I liked Hannah, I picked her, is because she's such a powerful woman. She is such a powerful woman. She is such a powerful conqueror. She is such a powerful believer. Amen. And if you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 2, she had one problem to begin with. No. A lot of us, we have problems in our life. So it's good for us to know how to tackle, how to solve the problems in our life, how to turn our problems into victories. How many of you want that? Amen. I believe with all of my heart that all the problems that come to us are for us to turn them into victories. Problems do not come from God. God is not in the business of giving you problems. We have problems because of ourselves, because of our flesh, and because of the world that we're living in, and of course, because of the devils that are in this world. But God is good. He's in the business of changing all of our problems into victories. And in so doing, He glorifies Himself. In so doing, He proves that He is real. That he is powerful. And in so doing, he proves that he is really in your life. That we're living in him and we're living by him. And not just struggling and striving in our flesh. Hannah had a problem. What's her problem? 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 2. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 2. The last part of that verse, Hannah had no children. That was her problem. It's a very legitimate desire. It's nothing wrong with wanting to have a child. It's nothing wrong with wanting to have children. That's her problem. We have here a woman who desires to have children. A woman who desires to have children. You can put your desire into her desire. You can identify with her. What are your desires? What are the desires that you truly want in your heart? That you would give everything that you have in order to receive the desires of your heart. And we have here a woman who is very, very much sorrowful. Why? Because it seems that her desire had been denied. It seemed that God was the one who had de denied the desires of her heart. 
It seemed like she was very um, inferior to everybody around her. It seemed like there's no way out for her. You know, in those days, they could not have what, um, what do you call that? Artificial um, huh? fertilization? Yeah, art IVF? IVF. In those days, they did not have IVF, but at the same time, I want to tell you, I know somebody who has done a lot of IVF and spent a lot of money on IVF and still could not get herself pregnant. So we have a woman here who is very sorrowful in her spirit, very, very grievous, and also her head was attacking her. Her head was tormenting her. And in fact, she was so sad, she was so grievous that she could not eat. And then on top, she had a husband who loved her very, very much, but did not understand her. Because for him, he'd already got lots of children. Why do you have to worry? Why can't you just be my lover? I don't, want, I don't need you to give birth to any children. Just be my lover. Ain't I enough for you? <laughs> and then she didn't answer that because obviously he did not know why she was so, so upset. Why was she upset? It's more than just wanting children, as later we will find out. It's more than just wanting children. She's upset because the enemy was attacking her. Her mind was attacking her. Her heart was attacking her. She felt very, she felt very, very unfulfilled. She felt that she was lacking something. She felt that she's not good enough. She felt that she's a laughing stock. If you have desires in your heart, the Word of God says in Psalm 37, verse 4, Psalm 37, verse 4, God has given us instructions so that we may get and obtain the desires of our hearts. Psalm 37, verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord. That's the instruction. Now, when you read your Bible, if you could bring your highlighters and highlight the scriptures that are instructions. Highlight the scriptures which are promises. Highlight the scriptures which are the works of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, rightly divide the word of God. That's how I first learned to read my Bible. So delight yourself also in the Lord. That is an instruction from God. And as a result of delighting yourself in the Lord, what is the result? The promise is that He shall give you the desires of your heart. So it's not me trying to struggle and to strive and to push everybody away to get the desire of my heart. It's me delighting myself in the Lord so that I am not the one giving the desires of my heart to myself. He is the one that will give me the desire of my heart. That's God's promises to his believers. Amen. It's very important, number one, that you discern the desires of your heart, whether they are from yourself, whether they are from the world, or whether they are from the devil. You need to identify where your desires are. There is a big difference between ambition and vision. So don't get into ambition, which is full of self, but get into vision, which is full of God. Amen? It's very, very important that we don't see what's happening around us, but see what's happening on the inside of us. Desires come from God. How do I receive those desires when I wait on the Lord, when I pray, when I sit in His presence, when I worship Him, when I can hear my spirit talking to me? If you can read a very, very powerful scripture in the book of Corinthians, um, let me if I see if I have got that in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. You think you know yourself? No, you don't. Do we know ourselves? No, we don't. We know our flesh. We know our thoughts. But we don't really know the depth that is in us. 
We don't really know the born-again spirit man, the desires that God has put in your born-again spirit man. How do we get to that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. You are more than what meets the eye. You are more than what you say. There is a depth in you. Your flesh is now in the depth of you. Your spirit is. And that's why it's important for us to listen to our born-again spirit. Otherwise, what's the difference between us and, a, and a, a person who is not born again? The difference between you and a born-again child of God is your spirit. Your spirit has been born again. Now your spirit can hear the Holy Spirit. Your spirit can now receive the thoughts of Christ. That's why the Bible says that you have the mind of Christ. Your spirit can now communion with the Holy Ghost. That's why you can lift up holy hands and worship Him. But if you are always very busy, if you are very, very distracted, your soul becomes so big, your head becomes so big and you walk around with a very big head and you walk around with a heavy heart and a very noisy soul, then you won't be able to hear the still, small voice of your spirit. It's very costly to be so, ex it's very costly to be so busy that you have no time to hear God. It's very, very costly. Because your desires can either make you or break you. So it's very, very important that we don't just come to God and say, God, give me this. God, give me this. Why are you not giving me that? Why are you not giving me that? It's very important to identify your desires and the spirit that is behind those desires. Is it the spirit of the flesh? Is it the spirit of the self? Is it the spirit of the world? Is it the spirit of ambition? Or is it the Holy Spirit? If your desires are from God, your desires will sanctify you. Your desires will make you more and more holy. But if my desire is just want to see my son, you know, be successful, you know, be the richest man, be the most knowledgeable man, then those desires will torment me. Those desires will not be good for me and not be good for my son nor my daughter. It's very, very important because whether you like it or not, we are ruled by our desires. The reason why people are chasing after money is because they think that with money, you can exchange that for the desire of my heart. If I have money, then I can get what I want. No, no, no. The Bible says that lust after money is what? The root of all evil. The lust after money is the root of all evil. So my advice for you is don't do anything for money. Wait on the Lord for Him to give you the desires of your heart. I remember when I was um, about to go into uni. And at that time, like, I was able to choose subjects. But I believe that it was God leading me, even those days, when I was a Catholic. I chose the desire of my heart, which was English literature. And I chose English literature. And I enjoyed my uni days. I enjoyed those days that I had when I was in uni. God will put the desires in your heart, and he will lead you to the fulfillment of the desires of your heart. So what was the desire of Hannah's heart? To have children. How do I know if that desire is from the Lord? I know and I know and I know that her desire is from God. Why? Because she encountered a lot of oppositions. And what's, who is the child she's about to conceive? His name is Samuel. Let me ask you, would God like Samuel to be birthed? Definitely, yes. A mighty prophet of God. Would the devil want Samuel to be born? Definitely, no. And that's why Hannah was so, so tormented. Because she had an adversary. The devil wanted to kill Samuel even before he was conceived. 
I want you to know that God knows you. He knows you even before you were born. He knows you even before you were conceived. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. And that's why some of us, you know, even though our children, I mean, even though our parents try to abort us, even though our parents try to dump us, but still here we are serving the Lord. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. God had a plan for Hannah. God had a plan for this mother who was feeling so bad about herself, who was feeling so inferior, who was feeling so terrible. It's very important. It's very, very important for us to identify the desires of our hearts. And to do that, number one, delight yourself in the Lord. Step into His presence. Spend time to wait on Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Hannah had a genuine desire and God promoted her desire to be a heavenly one and a kingdom one. I mean, desiring a child is good. Desiring to have children is good. I mean, that's just a natural and a good desire. But God promoted that desire to be a kingdom desire. God promoted desire to be a heavenly desire. Maybe your desire is just to have a job. Maybe your desire is just to have a business. Maybe your desire is just to have a house, have a car. Why don't you ask God to promote your natural desires to be a kingdom desire and a heavenly desire? Can we say amen? Lift up your hands if you want to. Lift up your hands if you want God to promote your desire to a heavenly level. Amen. God promoted Hannah's desire. Amen. Amen. So that she would have a son who will serve God for the rest of his life. How beautiful is that? How powerful is that? And that's why the devil was was tormenting her. That's why the devil was trying to stop her. And just got her crying and crying. How many of you you know that you can cry and cry and cry and you can sink into depression? That you don't even want to pray anymore. You don't even want to read the Bible anymore. God becomes so irrelevant. I mean, I've had those days. I've had those days when I was so hurt, when I was so tormented. And I said, God, where are you when I need you? I don't want to hear you anymore. I don't want to read the Bible. And I couldn't even pick myself up to pray. But God is faithful. We can be faithful because God is faithful. Lift up your hands and thank God for his faithfulness. We can be faithful because God is faithful. The key is don't ever be upset with yourself. You know, we can get so upset with ourselves because when we make mistakes, when we think that we should be good and we are not good enough, whether you feel upset about yourselves or whether you're very happy with yourself, that is still to do with self. We don't want self. We want God. We don't want self. We want God. Amen. It's not a big deal that I make mistakes. I mean, God knows that I make mistakes. It's not a big deal. But the key is that let the weak say that I am. Let the poor say that I am. Rich because of what the Lord has done for me. So our boasting is not in ourselves. Our boasting is not in how clever we are, how sharp we are. Our boasting is in the Lord. Can we say amen? Amen. Say amen to that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, God has a plan for Hannah's life. You better believe that. God has a plan for Hannah's life, but he needs her cooperation. God has a plan for each and every one of our lives, but he needs our cooperation. Say to yourself, God needs my cooperation. God has a plan for my life for my life, but I can just stay at home and just water my garden and you know feed my fish and take care of my house and do nothing. (laughs) God needs my cooperation. And in order to know that, we need to wait on Him. It's very important. When you have desires in your heart, how many times have you experienced frustrations? I mean, I have a desire in my heart, but I get frustrated. I want the desires in my heart. I want to be able to live on the mountaintop. I mean, I believe that that will come to pass before I die. But I, want, I love to be, you know, living on the hilltop. 
But if I try to make that happen, if I get sad because I haven't seen it happen, then what happened? Frustrations come. Frustrations, let me ask you, are they from God? No. So why was Hannah frustrated? Why was Hannah so frustrated to the, st to the extent that she couldn't eat, to the extent that she couldn't sleep, to the extent that she kept crying? Because she was being tormented by the devil. I want you to understand that frustrations are internal. It was good that Hannah realized that. She did not put the blame on the people around her. She realized that there's something wrong with her on the inside. She experienced the frustrations. I want you to know that when the devils harass you, you will feel frustrated. The Bible calls them bowsybub. You know, just swarms of flies flying around your head and buzzing. And then on the inside, you feel so agitated. You feel fr frustrated. That's what happened. Frustration in the realm of the spirit will lead to frustration physically and also in your heart. But Hannah is very, very good. She knew that the only place that she could solve her problem is in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. And if you can look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. She was in deep anguish and was crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. Whenever we have a problem, whenever we feel angry, whenever we feel frustrated, the place that we should go to is not the people around us. The place that we go to, should go to, is the secret place of the Most High. That's the safest place. That's the best place for us to go to. I want you to understand that it was not easy for Hannah to go to the tabernacle. The Bible tells us that every time when she would go to the tabernacle, she would be so mocked and she would be so tormented. I want you to know that the devil doesn't really care whether you have what you want, whether you're rich or whether you are poor. But one thing that he wants to kill is your faith. One thing that he wants to kill is your fellowship with God. Don't come to church because of anybody and don't stop coming to church because of anybody. Do you get me? Do you get me? Don't come to church because of people and don't stop coming to church because of people because if you do that, you fall straight into the traps of the devil. I had a, a vision. I was praying and uh, I had a vision and in that vision, I saw, like, it's very obvious, it's a devil. And I saw the devil lifting up his hands. Lifting up his hands, the devil was there lifting up his hands. And then I saw this cliff. And I saw that somebody was up there. Somebody was up there, and the Lord was holding him and holding him and holding him. But he was, like, struggling and dangling and kicking. And, and the devil was looking at that person, wanting that person to fall. Why? Because as soon as that person falls, he will fall straight into his arms. I want you to understand that you have an adversary to your soul. You're living in a war zone. There's an adversary, and he tries to torment you. He tries to come against you. And one thing that he's after is your faith. It's your fellowship with God. Don't let him get what he wants. Can we say amen? So Hannah, she abandoned herself where? In the presence of God. She would not allow the mental torments. She would not allow the soulish anger 
to stop her from coming to the Lord. And she got into the presence of God and she poured her heart. She poured out her heart. She poured out her prayers unto God. And then you notice that she started with crying in deep anguish and crying bitterly unto God. And then she ended up with 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 12. Go with me, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 12. Notice that. And she was praying to the Lord, and Eli watched her. If you could go to Eli, noticed her mouth moving as she was praying silently and hearing no sound and thought that she had been drinking. So Eli was looking at her and noticing her lips were moving. And, she, and he thought that she was drunk. He thought that she was drunk. I want you to understand that when you pray, when you pray earnestly, when you pray sincerely, you will start, yes, in the natural. You start to pray in the natural with your mind and you start to pray and you pray. But the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of prayer, will lead you out of your soulish realm into your spiritual realm. And before you know it, it's no longer your mind praying. It's no longer your feelings praying. It's not your self-will praying, but your spirit is praying. Your spirit is following the Holy Spirit and you'll be praying and your words become so sharp, your words become so precise, your words become so powerful and you'll speak words that you yourself will never get it when, when you were in the natural frame of mind. And that's what happened to Hannah. Prayer has the power to sanctify us. Prayer has the power to usher us into the holy of holies, into the presence of God. So what happened was that the spirit of prayer, who is the Holy Spirit, took over. Took over. And Eli thought that she's drunk. Well, the apostle Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. A drunkard does not know what he's doing or only know a bit, you know, but a drunkard is somebody who yields to the spirit of the wine. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you have been drunk before and you know what I'm talking about? And uh, so what happened was that Hannah was yielding to the spirit of prayer. And she was yielding to the spirit of prayer. And Eli thought that she was drunk. Now, for those of you that are still drinking and you think that alcohol has a lot to offer you, no, the Holy Spirit has a lot more to offer you. <laughs> Amen. You can get high on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So what happened? Eli thought that she was drunk with alcohol, but she was actually drunk with the Holy Ghost. She was intoxicated, yes, intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. You know why people love alcohol? You know why people like to drink, especially teenagers, you know? They like that high, they like to lose that inhibition, you know? Why? Because we are spirits. And we are made to be without limits. We are made to be free. We are made to be without inhibitions. And that's what the devil tries to offer you as a counterfeit, as a fake. The Bible says that whom the Son says free is free indeed. Taste and experience the freedom of God. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. So she said, no, she said, no, I'm praying. Amen. Why did she have to go into that place? Why did she have to get into that place of the spirit? Because she had to know herself. How do you know yourself? Only your spirit knows you. When you get into the place of your spirit, then the spirit starts talking to you. Your spirit starts talking to you. Your spirit starts exposing to you the things that are wrong. Your spirit starts telling you the things that need to be corrected. So her spirit is telling her that she's bitter. Her spirit is telling her, yes, yeah, she told, she said she's bitter. Her spirit is telling her that she's bitter. She has unforgiveness in her heart. And before that God could give her the desire of her heart, which God very, very much wants to, she had to deal with herself. I want you to understand that sin is blinding and sin will blind you and you think that you're fine. And you think that it's everybody's fault. No, it's not everybody's fault. Nobody can take care of you but yourself. 
Nobody can change you but yourself. So stop worrying about people trying to change you. Nobody can change you. Even God can't change you. Only with your cooperation, he'll change you. You know, we've had a lot of teaching that tells us, well, God is sovereign. You can do whatever he wants to do. That's, that's a lie. God cannot do whatever he wants to do. If he can do whatever he wants to do, we won't be the same. <laughs> well, some people say God is sovereign. If he wants to heal me, he will heal me. You can think like that and die sick. Everything happens with our cooperation. Even your salvation happened when you cooperated with God. So in order for you to get the desires of your heart, you must start cooperating with him and not kicking and screaming. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hannah did not stay home and did, he did not stay home and got all upset and offended. He, she got up, she made the decision to come into the presence of God. Amen. She knew that she had a problem. It's been too long. It's been too many years. And she realized that she had to deal with it. And in order to deal with it, she must come into the presence of God. And in the presence of God, she started to see her soul. She started to see the condition of her soul. She started to see that she was too arrogant and she was too prideful. She had to listen to God. She had to change her attitude. She had to change her mindset. She humbled herself. She received the touch of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So she realized what was stopping her was not those that were mocking her. What was stopping her was not even the devil. What was stopping her was the condition of her heart. How many of you get it? Praise God. I want us to understand and to get rid of that victimized mentality. Get rid of that victimized mentality. I'm victimized by the devil. I'm victimized by sickness and disease. I'm victimized by how people treat me. I'm victimized because I don't speak up for myself. I'm victimized. I'm victimized. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You're never a victim. You can rise up and be counted. You have to take your position in the spirit. You have to take your position in the realm of the spirit. You can try to conquer everybody in the flesh. But if you don't conquer the devil, you are his victim. What the devil wants to do is to get us to see and stay at the realm of the level, in, at the realm of the natural, and we see ourselves being victimized by our husbands, we see ourselves victimized by our sons, victimized by our mothers, by our children, by, by our wives, victimized, 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 and you get frustrated, you get mad, and you're never going to get married again, you never got a job again, you never do this again, you never come to church again. That's exactly what the devil wants, and he will say, yeah, 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 yeah. But as soon as you come into the, the presence of God and declare that no weapons of the enemy form against me can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, amen, I will condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can't afford to live in people's brains. You can try to please everyone. I mean, church, we know ev very well. Some people like the music loud. Some people like the music soft. Some like you to preach very gently and softly. Some people like to teach you, you with bonus and courage. You can't please everyone. It is not your business to please everyone, but you do have to please the Lord. You do have to please the Lord, so you need to find out what pleases Him. What pleases Him is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do you believe that you have a destiny in Christ Jesus? If you believe that you have a destiny in God, then lift up your hands and stop messing with your time. Stop messing with your life. Find out God's plan for your life and live it out. Live it out. Live it out. Don't be an employee. Don't be a hireling. Don't do it because people pay you. It's your calling. Live out your calling. Be a called person. 
Not an employed person. Not a hired person. Be a called person. Whatever you do, do it with all your might unto the Lord. And even if you are a wife, don't be a sweet wife because your husband is nice to you. You'll be a sweet wife because it's your calling. You'll be a good husband because it's your calling. You'll be a good child because it's your calling. Amen? Who is the one to reward you? God is the one to reward you. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Comes from above. Amen. So when she was in the presence of God, then what happened? God took care of her. Now let's look at her prayer. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. Verse 10, Hannah was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. So when she started her prayer, she was very angry, you know. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and will not forget your handmaid, Do you understand why she's so bitter now? Because she felt so rejected by the Lord. Because she felt so neglected by the Lord. She said, God, you have forgotten me. You have not been answering my prayer. I'm no good to you. I'm no value to you. Let me ask you, who was telling her that? Had to be the devil. That's why she was tormented. It's not really the child. We'll find out. And, what were, and then what happened when she got into the presence of God and God's anointing was all over her. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the comforter was ministering to her and talking to her. And as soon as she poured out her, her soul, the anguish of her soul, as soon as she started to become transparent before the Lord. And then what happened? The image came to her. She started seeing herself with a child. And she said, Lord, if you will give your maidservant a male child. Her prayer starts to become precise. She did not say, well, even a girl would do, please. No, she was very specific. A male child. Lord, you are my only source. I'm telling you what I desire. I desire a male child. Now, she is lining herself now, synchronizing herself with the heart of God. How many of you know that Samuel was in the heart of God? And now her prayer is lining up with the heart of God. And she started to say, a male child. So the image now, she got it. She got the image of the child born already. And then she continued to say, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. A generous spirit came upon her. It's no longer, Lord, you gave it to me, so I'll hold on to him. No, she said, I will give it to you. I will give my child to you to serve you all the days of his life. The possessiveness is gone and the desire to please the Lord comes in. Lift up your hands. Desire for your marriage to serve the Lord, to glorify Him. Desire for your business to serve the Lord, to glorify Him. Desire everything that you want to please the Lord, to glorify Him. That's the best and the highest position that you can be. Can we say amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. And Eli got it. The anointing was so strong. The anointing was there. And Eli, remember, he was the prophet. He could feel the movement of the Holy Spirit. He could know. He could hear God. So Eli said to him in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17, he said, go in peace now. The God of Israel, grant your petition which you have desired of him. The prayer was answered. The desire granted. Very, very important. Very, very important. And if you look at verse 20. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel. What does Samuel mean? The word Samuel means because I've asked for him from the Lord. So Hannah, she received the desire of the Lord. And she hasn't like... 
it's like she left the place where she prayed and her countenance, her face was no longer sad because the answer had become real to her. And she was very, very happy. Even before she got pregnant, she was so happy. She was so joyful. And the Bible says that in the process of time, she was still believing. She was still honoring God. She was still up, you know, lifting up her hands to God. Her faith was carrying her. Amen. Her faith was carrying her. Amen. The power, the power of faith was carrying her. Praise the Lord. I want you to look at verse 22. Now, Samuel had already been born, was a baby. And then Hannah said, Not until the child is weaned, then I would take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. Now, I want you to understand that Hannah, this is the desire of her heart granted to her by the Lord. And she said, without any hesitation, she was so calm, she was so organized, she was so planned, she said, I need to wean my baby, and as soon as my baby is weaned, I'll take, her to, I'll take him to Eli, and I will leave him with Eli in the tabernacle forever and ever. Can you, can you imagine that? How many mothers that you don't ever want to leave your children? Lift up your hands. How many mothers that you know, even when you were to leave your child, when you first take him or her to the child care center, you would go home and cry. <laughs> we call it separation anxiety. But Hannah, she is so full of the Holy Ghost. She knows God so well. She is so secure in God. So we know that it was not whether or not she had a child. What was attacking her was her insecurity. She was not secure in God before. That's why she was so tormented. She could not believe that God would answer her prayer. She did not believe that God was listening to her. She felt so rejected and so neglected. But now, but now, but now, praise God. She had been affirmed. She had been reassured. So she's lack of no good. She's not in lack anymore. And her faith has grown. And she had planned. And she said, yes, as soon as the weaning is over, I will take Samuel to God. Lift up our hands and receive that security from God. Lift up your hands and receive that security. Whether it's your job, whether it's your business, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your children, anything, your security in God, your security in Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And if we look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. 1 Samuel 1, 27 to 28. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have given him to the Lord as long as he lives. He shall be lent to the Lord. And so they worshipped the Lord there. Can you see that victory? Would you call that victory? Would you call that victory? Yes. Understand that she did not know that God is going to multiply her and give her children. She didn't know at that point. She was completely able to, what Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down, I have the power to pick it up again. How many of you remember Abraham? What did he have to do with Isaac? Placed Isaac on the altar. Placed Isaac on the altar. I want you to understand that there will be tests that will come to you in your life. Tests that will come to you in your life that you have to lay it on the altar. You have to lay it on the altar. 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 Lord, I know that in and of myself, I don't have any power, no ability to protect my children. I lay my children on the altar. Lord, I know that in and of myself, I don't have any ability to, to uh, live a perfect marriage. I lay it on the altar. I'm not in the business of changing anybody, but I'm in the business of changing myself. That 
that's what Hannah did. That's what happened to her. Amen. Let's look at her victory in chapter 2. Look at her prayer. How she was promoted in the spirit. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1, Hannah prayed. She prayed. How did she pray? My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. It's no longer what they did to me. It's no longer what they did to me. It's no longer why God you don't do this to me. I am confident in my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Her heart now is full of faith faith in her mighty God. Amen. Can you see the victory? It's the spirit of victory that she has received. And then you continue with verse 3 to 4. You look at the spiritual insight that had been given to her. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are girded with strength. Because she herself had been strengthened, because she herself had been encouraged, now she believes in God's judgment. She's not judging anyone. It's God. By God, actions are weighed. Everything that we do, there is a spirit behind it. Everything that we do, there's a spirit behind it. And God will see the spirit that is driving you. God will see the spirit that is causing you to do what you do. If you're angry, it's the spirit of cursing. It's the spirit of the devil that causes you to be angry and frustrated. The, the Holy Spirit will expose that to you, and you need to get rid of it. Can we say amen? And then you continue. She prophesied. Of her own fruitfulness. I mean, no, no, that Eli did not come to her and say, prophesy to you, thus saith the Lord, you're going to have four or six children. No, she got the spirit of the Lord. She got the spirit of the Lord and she started prophesying over herself. The spirit of the Lord was all over her and she started prophesying. Verse 5, even the barren has borne seven children. Seven is the number of perfection, the ideal number from the Lord. And then verse 21, I want you to see the fulfillment of that prophecy. Verse 21, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters, including Samuel. She had altogether six children, the number of a man. Can you see that? You can never outgive God. That's what prosperity is about. You can never outgive Him. Whatever you've given to the Lord, He will multiply it and give it to you. And it's good and perfect. Amen. And now she is sure of God's protection. She is sure of God's judgment. Go to chapter, six, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. For by strength shall no man prevail. Now I realize it's not me trying to struggle and strive, trying to deal with it all by myself. No, by strength shall no man prevail. It's the Spirit. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of God. And he will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Amen. Amen. So if we look at Hannah, she was a mother who was filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, giving birth to a God-ordained child who would serve God all the days of his life. And Samuel was so powerful and so anointed, the word of God says that God will not allow his words, not even one will fall to the ground. How many of you would like to be a mother like Hannah? How many of you would like to partake of her anointing? How many of you would like to lay hold of her spirit? Lay hold of the spirit of Hannah, whether you are a male or a female. Lay hold of the spirit of Hannah right now. Lift up your hands and lay hold of the, her spirit. Lay hold of the spirit of Hannah, that you might be victorious, that you might be powerful, 
that you might be prosperous, that you might be anointed, that you may be cooperating with God and seeing God's desires, fulfillments come to pass for your life. Over and above all that you can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.